So thank you so much for having me on this amazing event. And uh, my name is Anika. I'm the founder of a company called uh, Pika Bond, and we help global families build bonds with young children remotely. I ha actually have a background as an investor. So before st starting Pika Bond, I worked for eight years for different venture capital funds uh, in the Netherlands and also abroad. Um, and I lived on five different continents myself. So quite an international uh, background. And the reason I started Picabond is from a personal perspective. Um, my sister lives in Australia and she has a two-year-old daughter that I'm completely in love with. And I just thought um, there needs to be a solution to enable families to build a bond remotely with young children, even though you cannot be together all the time. Mm, so, oh, I love that. I'm wondering if I can just do a quick introduction uh, before we get here, all the rest of your, yeah, your information. Awesome. So um, as part of this, this leadership summit, I was actually looking to bring some leadership experts, industry leaders here. So I'm super excited, Anika, that you've joined us today to tell us about Pika Bond. Um, and so the whole focus of this summit is I'm calling it the Sweet Spot Global Leadership Summit. And the fact that you have a global company, I think, really aligns with um, this whole vision of this event. So I'm really excited to hear more about that. And so I guess you've already introduced yourself a little bit. Um, I want to give a little personal introduction that uh, I actually got a chance to play with the Pika Bond app this morning. I have a two-year-old daughter, and a lot of our family lives far away. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to explore connecting that way. So I'm excited to hear about what you have to say about all of that so I guess I'll hand it back over to you Anika. Great lovely yeah so as a little agenda for today I thought it would be nice for everyone to hear a little bit of background like what is Pika Bond um, before diving into my key learnings after found, founding the company like one and a half year ago approximately mm -hmm. is when the idea started and uh, open it up for any questions that you may have afterwards. That sounds great. Yeah. Love that. Awesome. Great. <laughs> so let's start with uh, the back background of uh, Picabon. So um, as I said, I have a little niece in Australia and I interviewed many people about this problem of having um, little children at a distance and came across three key issues. So one is, of course, the attention span of young children is not, not very uh, uh, big. So um, I, I saw that uh, children get distracted very easily and also grandparents and also other uh, mature people don't really know how to be playful behind a video call um, like uh, like we are now, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. And what ends up is that it's a combination, conversation between the adults talking and the kids running around, it being a bit of a mm -hmm. frustrating experience rather than it being a nice family bonding moment. And that's how we came up with uh, Picabond. So we position it as a um, global playground, um, a digital playground actually, for families to come together with children to play all sorts of games. And, and you don't even have to be live at the same time. You can actually play a game and uh, play it when it suits you best. And the child yeah. can just respond to that when it suits them best. That sounds great. I know uh, with my daughters too, uh, she likes to watch videos because we take videos a lot to share with our families because so they can <laughs> see those special moments and she likes to watch them again and again. And, and one thing I, I saw that, you, you know, you kind of collect to create a sort of almost a, a collection of the videos. So I could see that being super useful too, to be able to watch yeah. it when, when your kids want to watch it, you know, not necessarily when everybody else is available. Exactly. And, and often people also ask me the question, what makes it diff different than, for example, FaceTime or WhatsApp, what people are using now? And I think the um, most important answer to that is that we've actually mapped out the entire child development journey from zero to six and mm -hmm. uh, have discovered like several milestones that children typically go through at different life stages and give games and content suggestions to help them develop those important life skills. Um, and that's also very suited for their age categories. So, oh, wow, that, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a lot yeah, of fun. So, um, yeah, we're, we're testing that. And also, like I said, you don't have to be live at the same time, which is also quite uh, helpful for, for families with uh, time zone difference. But as you know, as a parent, planning with young kids can also be quite challenging. So, yes, um, exactly. Yeah, getting that yeah, kind of just, sweet spot while they're rested, you know, where they're still going to be able to be focused is challenging for sure. Exactly. So yeah, we're live in the App Store, so uh, free for everyone to download if you like. 
And so far it's been downloaded in 28 countries after the first month of the launch in the App Store. Wow, prior to so congratulations. Cool thing to yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> um, and we're slowly uh, growing, but I think I've gathered so many learnings in the past year and sometimes it's just, um, you know, you don't have a lot, a lot of time as a founder to write down all your learnings. I feel like I, I can already write a book. So I'm actually really happy to be able to present at least some of my learnings uh, the past mm -hmm. year. So I took a little time before this presentation to um, kind of reflect on the key learnings of, of building a startup from, from scratch. And I hope some of the leaders watching can, can learn from that and um, maybe grow even faster than, how, than we did. So I guess one of the most important things is that might sound like a cliche, but I think people is so important. So never compromise on the quality of your, of your people. And for me specifically, I selected on two things that was passion for solving the problem. And mm -hmm. secondly, also value alignment. So for me, the problem of remote bonding with young children was very close to my heart. So I was very, I guess, stubborn to solving that problem but I was not really stubborn in the solution. So I was really willing to find different ways and the best solution out there for the problem, but I was not really flexible, I guess, on changing the problem that we're kind of going to solve. I love um, it. So you're really kind of focused on that vision piece and then bringing the experts in to help you achieve that vision, even though you weren't necessarily sure what it's gonna look like exactly. as you're moving forward. Wow, okay, yeah. that sounds great. Yeah. and. Um, I guess the, this is a picture of me with my little niece at a distance. Aww. And also <laughs> one of the first questions that I asked each of my co-founders, like, why do you have affinity with this problem? And uh, Vincent was my first co-founder to come on board and he has a four-year-old son and he was immediately, it clicked for him. Um, his parents don't even live that far away, like two hour drive from where he lives. Mm -hmm. which is not like for the Netherlands, it's really lo uh, long, but I know for Canadian <laughs> and US standards, that's nothing. Um, but even if you live two, two hours away, it can sometimes be yeah the, the case that you only get to see each other once every two months or maybe once a month. And I guess, especially grandparents, they often just want to see their grandchildren every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was immediately something that clicked. And Alia is one of the former speakers, I guess, of this event. She is um, originally from Colombia. She lived in the US for quite a while. And she has three little kids in um, Australia, in, uh, sorry, in, in the US that she wants to bond with, mm. not her own kids, but her sister's kids. Um, so it also immediately clicked with her. And I, I really selected based on that, uh, what my core team uh, looks like. And next to that, we also did a uh, value assessment. So there's uh, mm. actually a free value assessment. I'm familiar with this. Tool. Yes, I love this tool. Yeah, so <laughs> it's a great one. Test. So yes. you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, a lot of people know Maslow's uh, theory, hierarchy of needs, which mm -hmm. has like the base of the pyramid uh, needs um, on, on the bottom, but there's also an inverted pyramid on top. And for me, having that, um, you know, finding meaning and, and making a positive difference in the world was also very important because I was building an impact company. So mm. I was really looking for value aligned people in my team. And this has become like our, our assessment before any person in our team starts. We have them fill out, fill out the value questionnaire and we kind of compare like how are we the same and how are we different as a nice starting point. I sure. love that. I, I just want to pause on that for a second is because yeah. I, I believe that values piece is more powerful than like the personality piece. I know that some companies do kind of strengths. I, I work with strengths as well in my coaching, but this values um, is also a, a key piece. And, and I agree with you, you know, if you're focused on impact, then if you have people that that aren't even at that level of their development yet, you know, the, the, or that isn't a priority for them in their life right now, then, then that wouldn't be a good fit. So I can really see how powerful taking the time to do that assessment would be. So I, I want to say that's a huge takeaway um, that you yeah. shared with us today. So thank you. And I can even share a link to that uh, values test video, the video if people want to play with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would suggest everyone to, uh, to look into that because it does maybe sound like, um, you know, um, sometimes you don't have a lot of time and like these things only take time, but on the longer term, I promise it actually pays back. Absolutely. <laughs> we've, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we've learned from that as well from, from other hires that 
that we didn't um, immediately do that assessment with. And, and then um, yeah, we found out that it's really important to do that. So we now have a team where I believe everyone's really value aligned. So we're now seven, seven people. And also we do this for our investors and advisors in our team. So oh, I guess fabulous. we're finding the right people on the, on the boat, uh, on the peak boat, I call it, um, uh, who have the same, um, yeah, who, who understand our vision and, and the problem we're trying to solve. And I guess um, for many of our uh, angel investors, as well as invite advisors, they really personally have affinity with that problem because they have kids themselves or even grandkids mm -hmm. and they want to have it solved. So that really helps. So the second um, learning, I guess, is really be obsessed about your users. What are their most pressing problems and how can you find a solution for that? Um, and um, I guess one of the tricky things is that I'm a user myself. So sometimes you are a bit, um, you know, uh, biased, I guess, in a way, because you think you are also the user, but it's mm. very important to keep in touch with those users. So in the beginning, it was just me when I started the company and I was speaking to five, maybe 10 families a week myself, which was very intensive, um, like user contact, but the bigger your company, gets the further away from the users you also get and I think it's um, very important to keep in it that um, you know feeling with um, your your users and how they relate to your product um, so yeah I, I researched a lot and then found out that bonding is important I also did a lot of um, you know a scientific uh, background study on uh, the theory behind remote bonding and why it is so important so I really made a so-called uh, theory of change as well. So I think mm -hmm. a combination of being scientific as well as being very practical uh, is very, very important. Um, so yeah, I found out quickly that um, children um, and secure attachments for children are very important for success later in life. Um, grandparents regularly feel, feel lonely. And I also saw this in the interviews that I did because I literally had grandparents crying on the phone because Aww. some school had happened. Mm -hmm. They weren't able to even meet their firstborn grandchild. And that was made it so tangible. And mm -hmm. I guess also interviewing those people and seeing their response. And, um, you know, that gets you also through the hard days because <laughs> you think, okay, this is not just a problem for me that I'm solving, but also for all those people that I've, I've spoken to. Right. And so I can imagine that keeping that sort of passion for that mission, you know, alive. And, and I, put, I was directly one of those people as well. We had our daughter right at the beginning of the lockdown here in Canada. And I think she wasn't, it wasn't until she was four months until she got to meet her grandparents. So I, I can really see that this is um, a really timely kind of solution or, you know, a tool for people to be using in this sort of era that we're in right now. Yeah, and um, do you also relate to the seventy-one percent of parents feel increasingly stressed? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Having to manage, um, you know, work and maybe the kids at home, and then also being the one who has to kind of like mediate that relationship between the child and family at a distance. And mm -hmm. A lot of parents saying like, "Oh, I felt so bad because it was like, oh, I haven't spoken to my parents in two weeks," and. Oh yeah, that, we have to do that. It almost felt like an obligation rather than a, you know, a nice uh, relaxing moment or uh, maybe something that brings them value. So, um, right, I really yeah, a lot of opportunity in that. Yeah, so we've spoken to a lot of uh, users, and those uh, users ultimately also became our our fans, and they can kind of get that flywheel going. So. Um, we positioned ourselves as something that's designed for kids that helps people build social emotional uh, bonds. So to help the child to uh, also develop those uh, skills and um, that is using technology as a source for good and also uh, like scientifically um, correct, I guess. So grounded in science uh, theory. So the two things in our app that we um, um, created was the the content suggestions, so the inspiration, as well as saving everything in one spot. And that really came out of the interviews that we did, because um, otherwise it would have probably looked completely uh, different. Um, and uh, a third uh, suggestion, I think, um, as a learning, uh, I had some 
really, um, I guess, uh, not panic moments, but uh, in the beginning of the, um, the process, I guess, I did a lot of market research on like, what is out there? Is there already a solution for what I'm trying to do? And I didn't find it. But whilst um, building it, of course, new things pop up. And sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, this is so similar to what I'm doing. And you're, um, you know, maybe even panicking a bit like, um, oh gosh, um, this is similar or it's uh, a little bit different, but, uh, you know, it could be a huge threat. But I guess the fact that um, I didn't find it uh, when I was searching for a solution, it also means, you know, ideas are cheap. What's very important is execution. So mm -hmm. there might be some other parties out there who are doing something similar. That doesn't mean that you cannot be um, successful uh, in what you do. And sometimes it can even be very helpful to position yourself in the minds of people um, like a party who uh, kind of piggybacks on other parties. Um, the trends that were very important for us, of course, were, uh, for example, privacy concerns, I guess uh, the global pandemic in, in general really helped us grow because people were more used to communicating and bonding with people online. Mm -hmm. And um, it says that the timing timing was perfect. You know, it's exactly probably a, a massive appetite and a need for, for this and appreciation. Yeah, yeah there was kind of a perfect storm for mm -hmm. us. So I know, I know uh, you know, the lockdown, I'm obviously from, as, from a personal perspective, not very happy with it, but from a company perspective for us, it's really uh, good. <laughs> so I guess there is uh, not a lot of companies out there who can say that, but for us, it was not too bad. Um, and uh, yeah, my to my previous point, what I tried to say is sometimes there are parties out there that you can really piggyback on. So for example, how we often position ourselves is if Sesame Street would have a baby with TikTok, it would be Pika Bond. <laughs> a lot of people know Sesame Street, obviously, and a lot of people know TikTok, but um, yeah, it's an easy way to explain what you're doing, I guess, and um, yeah, with a little bit of a wink. <laughs> yeah, <as well>. so, <laughs> that's um, fun. Yeah, and I guess uh, this probably has been uh, told so many times, but experimenting is so important, and sometimes you do very small experiments, and when they're before you build them out, but you also have to have some big bets. I think one of the key learnings that I um, had last year is also to really do that in a structured way. So what we have is an air table, and this is just a print screen that I took off uh, like from a, an example online, which I think anybody can also download, is to really list all the experiments that you're running and also list the results that you're getting from them and really for each experiment state a hypothesis of what you think you're going to achieve because it's really going to help you in improving on your results um, very fast. Mm, I um, love that sort of very deliberate, you know, approach to it. And, and so sort of kind of just being, I know creativity can sometimes be a little bit um, freeform, right? So to be able to take that and be deliberate and like you're saying, a little more scientific in your approach. That's exactly. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit more structured as well, because um, when it was just, uh, I guess, little old me uh, starting uh, with the company, I was just running around with a, like a headless chicken uh, chasing <laughs> every, after everything. But as soon mm -hmm. as more people come on board, they're also like, oh, wait, what experiments are we running again? So we now have a very clear template for that. And um, we actually score on a weekly basis, which experiments we think are going to impact our business uh, positively the most and, okay uh, which could also be the ones that you know don't take that much effort so you kind of like pick the low-hanging fruit first um, mm -hmm. with high impact of course um, and uh, it also helps you to um, look back and say for example hey we did this experiment and we expected uh, x amount of conversion on that and it isn't as uh, we expected so maybe the learning there is that we should stop doing that so, and it also helps to, of course, transfer all that knowledge to new new people in the company who are quickly, you know, uh, joining as well. And um, they can clearly see what we've been working on as well and work from there rather than working from scratch. Mm -hmm, absolutely. That sounds like a, a super take, good takeaway. Mm -hmm. 
Great, and then um, maybe my final learning, I guess, um, being also a former impact investor, I really believe that uh, making a positive impact on the world whilst also um, becoming a you know profitable business is possible. Um, and uh, over the year, I have spoken to so many investors and of course, a lot of them are really looking at it from a return on investment perspective. But mm-hmm. I do think it's very important to tune into that inner, um, you know, why of why you started the company and um, use that also in, um, you know, building out the company. So for me, that why was, of course, my little niece at a distance. Mm -hmm. Um, And I really looked into, okay, how can I build a bond with my little niece at a distance? And how can I make that happen, not just for my own family, but for families worldwide? So we kind of like, like said, our big, hairy, audacious goal at uh, 4 million families in 2026. Oh, wow. Um, That's amazing. (laughs) It's a big, hairy goal. It's a scary goal as well. But um, I think it really sets a nice dot on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And it also helps to uh, convince uh, investors, of course, because our impact goals, which are those, you know, better bonds uh, for families globally, are also positively aligned to our future uh, financial goals. So, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, if you... um, of course, improve the bonds, you improve the financials as well. And um, that is something that we really strive for. Um, So yeah, I think um, more anecdotally, when I started this company, um, I just saw my little niece uh, at a distance, I guess, two years ago. And um, she recently visited uh, in Amsterdam airport. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, her eyes sparkled as soon as she saw me. She recognized me, and she oh, that's ran into amazing. my arms. <laughs> oh. yeah, so that was really for me, uh, yeah, like proof that what we're doing is really working. At least mm. it is working for my family, and I hope it will for many people out there as well. Um, so um, yeah, I guess that uh, is something that I wanted to. Uh, convey to the to the rest of the audience as well to tune into your uh, your personal mission and maybe expand that to building a whole business around it it is possible yes and and I think that's so inspiring because I, I think more and more people are becoming aware of where things aren't aligned to our values like you've mentioned and and maybe it, you know, as people are changing jobs and this great resignation process, I think there's a lot of that reinvention already happening, like for you and, and for, for many of the people that I, I know as well. So these have been amazing, amazing tips. I'm very inspired. So thank you. I'm sure everybody else Perfect. listening will feel the same as well. Um, yeah. This is great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was it. I'm opening any other questions. I know that you, um, one of the things you asked me, I think was the freebie. So um, mm-hmm. I'm also proud to say that I have uh, written an ebook on how to bond with young children remotely. So um, I'm going to uh, give that away as a freebie to the Wonderful. audience. Also. And uh, you can provide a link for that uh, for everyone. That's wonderful. Well, I'll put the links below the video so they can all check that out. I, I've downloaded mine. I haven't read it yet, but I'm super excited to be to be expanding the bonding with my daughter, with her ex- extended family. And, and, and I really appreciate both how you shared about the company and the tool and the Peak Bond you know, app, but also your leadership, uh, all of the takeaways as well. And because that is that is kind of the focus of, of this summit. I guess I'm wondering, one of the things that I found is important for me as a coach and that I I kind of work on is that inner mindset, that resilience piece as people are looking at leading, because I know when that's off, everything else is harder. So I'm wondering if you have any um, tips around your own personal well-being in going through this sort of getting from idea to getting a team to getting investors and now serving 28 countries and growing. (laughs) Yeah, um, it's an ongoing uh, a theme, I guess, that uh, you have to do. And, and for me, the first half year, I think, was the toughest, having the most sleepless nights, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, um, 
I, because I was uh, in the middle of, I guess, what they call GoFounder dating. Um, <laughs> okay. Myself in, in a relationship for 11 years, like in my private life. So I never was used to the dating life and especially not um, you know, GoFounder dating, which is maybe even, well, I, don't, I wouldn't say like a bigger decision than a life partner, but it is pretty big decision. Um, but for me, um, having a co-founder to, to, spare, to use as a sparing partner was very important, as well as, um, you know, having some outside uh, peers. So I have um, a group of other founders in my network who are going um, through the same things, but maybe a couple of years ahead. So I really mm -hmm. ask them hey, do you want to be my mentor? Because I think you're very inspiring. And, you know, I, I can see that you've already kind of like passed a couple of, um, I guess, milestones or steps that I'm still, you know, kind of like uh, struggling with. Mm -hmm. And um, that is really helpful. And I think also paying that forward for other people who are starting. So I really enjoy speaking to, uh, you know, founders and, and people who are really starting now because I'm already like one and a half year Ahead of them, I guess. Right. Um, yes. Um, the, the the tools and um, you know the tips to to get going because it is, um, you know, it is uh, not easy to be <laughs> to be a founder of a company, and um, I definitely would not recommend it to everyone. Um, but it is also really satisfying as well if it if it works, and um, even if it doesn't work, I guess it also is a great learning experience. So um, yeah, to, to like summarize, I would say have, have a nice sparing partner, have a good uh, social network um, of other uh, peers to, to spare with. And um, maybe a last one, and uh, I didn't say that, but when I showed a slide on advisors, one of my advisors is also an executive coach, just as mm -hmm. yourself. And I think people like you having, having your coaches and your mentors, um, you know, helping you when shit hits the fan, I guess. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and I think that can be easy to feel in whatever leadership role you're in to feel kind of disconnected, right? And or or kind of on your own sometimes. And so I really appreciate you highlighting the value of that time together to, you know, be supported and get some, you know, get that help when you need it and also to share with others when they need it as well. That's that's wonderful. And I think as a as a final comment, it is also, um, I guess, learning what gives you energy and recharges you um, uh, in the weekend. Is it maybe taking a long hike, um, spending time with your family or with your with your dog or cat or whatever you have, or taking a long bath, um, which re relaxes you. It also helps you to be your best back when you're at work. So I do believe that it is possible to build a company where, um, you know, your work and life balance is um, in balance, I guess. Right, so. yes, beautiful. And I, I think that's a, a great kind of summary and to, to see that you've been able to do what you've done this past year while having that that healthy balance, you know, most of the time, perhaps. <laughs> so thank you so I much. I all the time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I try, I strive for it. So. Yeah, well, and there are phases, like you said, when you're kind of that early investor phase, that's, that's a lot of, lot of kind of big energy and kind of figuring that out. And then you're bringing on teams as a different phase. And then as you're kind of rolling out, I bet you that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, that support piece and the self-care piece, I know are crucial re regardless of what phase we're in. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing today. It's been awesome to meet you. I'm so honored to, to get to know you and uh, yeah. to share your story with everyone. I'm sure it's going to be super inspiring to everybody and they'll be able to take a variety of, of uh, tips for themselves and inspiration yeah. moving forward and as well as the Pigabond tool themselves to use uh, within their family connection. So thank you so much for being here today. Welcome. And also for, for anyone watching, if you ever want tips or want to reach out to me I'm pretty approachable through LinkedIn or I'm trying out Twitter I'm new to Twitter but <laughs> if you want to approach me there that's fine too um, I usually respond to, to requests quite quite quickly so. wonderful well, I can I can link those um, as well so everybody has you know can reach out to you that way as well so any final right. thoughts I guess before we wrap up and I think that sounds like we've covered it but I don't know if we have anything else um, finally 
Well, I, I have to say, I, I haven't said that in the beginning, but I really like the name of, of your company as well, Exhale mm -hmm. and, and Thrive. So sometimes just Thank you. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. And uh, sometimes it's the best thing you can do to thrive. Yeah, it is. That's what I found is my own personal journey and reminder <laughs> because, because I, you know, when anytime things get challenging it, it always helps to pull back and kind of reconnect and stay connected to the values and everything that you've talked about today. So I'm, I really am glad that you've been able to be here as it's been an awesome aligned uh, presentation and I'm sure everyone will really enjoy it. So thank you so much. Great. Thanks. Have a great Bye. day. Thanks. <laughs>